Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Champions of Meandir gameplay video series. I'm Alvin, the designer and game director for Champions, and today I'm here with George and Nick. Ivan, unfortunately, couldn't make it to our recording today. But we'll do our best without him. I'm sure it'll still be a fun game. Um, Three-way multiplayer in this game is pretty good, actually, so we get to showcase that today, if nothing else. If you're new here and you'd like to learn how to play this game, check out our Learn to Play Champions of Meandir video playlist, which will give you everything you need to get started. Link to it will be in the video description. Let's go ahead and introduce our decks for today, starting with Nick. All right, my deck today stars Yumi, the avid painter. Yumi's ability wants you to play many different cards and many different card types to score points. I'm playing sort of a whole wide variety. We got items, we got tactics, we got campaigns. I want to mix them up. I want to make sure we're playing lots of stuff for her to gain as points with. Uh, to support that, we'll need some card draw and some cost reduction effects along the way, because it really is a lot of cards to play. Nice. Very cool. Excited to see what you came up with. All right, and next we have Mr. George Stanford Porter. Okay, so my deck is called Emerald Dreams. It's got Mufari the Beast Hunter. I wanted to try and create a deck from my lessons last week with trying to make a more assertive and aggressive deck. And I like the results of how far I got, but I made a few mistakes in seeing my win conditions. So I wanted to create a deck that had more clear win conditions, something that can build into maybe even a late game two turn turnaround. So look yeah. out. Yes. And actually, as I was reviewing the footage for last week's game, I actually did notice you had a pretty good shot at winning that game if you had just made a few different plays. So interested to see how you progress. And finally, we have me playing Kazin, Freedom Fighter. So I was inspired by George's aggression yesterday, so I'm going to get my aggression on in this game. In fact, I'm going to try to attack as many times as I possibly can and score points that way. So the intros are done. Mulligans have been complete. Let us begin the game. Oh boy. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Turn one Grand Fish Market. Doesn't feel good, huh? Turn one Grand Fish Market doesn't feel good, but what I like to do right now is just play my Restraining Order. Ah. And we will pass turn. All right. Get my goal for turn. I will play Slave Cells so that I have something to attack to that isn't some of your stuff, just in case I want to get around this Restraining Order. And then I'll go ahead and use right. Counter Draw. Turn one. And I will go ahead and play a Black Mora Powder. And wow. Then I'll go ahead and pass my turn. All right, my turn. Gain some gold, play a location, take a free draw. And with that gold, we'll just drop a campaign and start drawing some cards in the future. Ooh. So that's all I can do, so pass the turn. No search counter, huh? Yeah, well, we'll get there. My second turn with a diligent farmer. Not a bad turn to play. Not bad. This seems familiar. Do we have to be worried again? Mm, <laughs> well, maybe if uh, we're putting two of them on board or three of them on board every turn. <laughs> right. Maybe. But we're passing my turn for now. All right. Get my gold for turn. Take my free draw. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and play Grand Fish Market so that I am wow. aligned to green, which will allow me to play this card without alignment tax. Welcome new settlers. And I'm going nice. to go ahead and create two settlers. And then now that I have two denizens aligned to green, I will use the Grand Fish Market's arrival ability to draw myself one card. And then nice. I'll go ahead and drop this card here. Um, Hidden crag. Yeah. And I'm just taking a look-see around the board. I think that's a good enough turn. Pass. Yeah, that was pretty good. Let's see if I can match it. We'll gain my gold, up my phase counters, and take a free draw for the turn. Pretty good. It's pretty good. I think... Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll, we're going to search on the Hidden Waterfall, and I'll play my own item, Obstructive Roadblock. Oh, boy. And it's going, to, uh, yep. it's going to make sure you can't visit that Hidden Crag just yet. <laughs> see, I can't even get mad because I'm very excited to see that you guys are responsible gamers today and packing some Obstructive Roadblocks. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I get to take a card draw from my History Education as well. We'll do that. But I'm out of gold and nothing else to do, so pass. Okay, it's my turn three. Nick is being very scary, putting... Mm -hmm. So I have to stay diligent myself. Yeah, you're very diligent. Six cards. Let's do the free draw. Let's do the free draw now. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Not a bad draw. Let's play... Let's put... Ah, Work, work the fields. fields. I remember that from last game. Although mm. one Work the Fields is a lot less scary than two Work the Fields. True. 
<laughs> Very true. <laughs> All right. Get my gold for turn. Take my free draw. All right. So we're going to go ahead and spend one gold to play Obstructive Roadblock. And I'm going to select Bang. this location. How very dare you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> for the imprint. And then I'll go ahead and play this card here, the Forceful Debt Collector. And then I'll have these two settlers attack into my slave cells, dealing two total damage. Ooh. And because I'm attacking a card that I control, they will not become hostile in the process. Therefore, not making themselves vulnerable to this restraining order sitting over here. And then... Wow. Uh, yeah, I think a tricky, pretty tricky. productive turn. I'll go ahead and pass that way. Yeah. All right. Scan my gold and do the phase counter upage. All right, we don't get to go up with Hidden Waterfall, but... Why? Well, there's a little thing in play with uh, keeping it keeping it locked down. Oh, this little thing? <laughs> Over there. So, four gold this turn, potentially. Uh, okay, we'll start with uh, play a familiar road and choose to imprint it to purple. That's nice. my reminder there, purple. We'll take our free draw for the turn. I think we will start getting down, getting down some points, I believe. We'll play Yumi the Avid Painter. Mm -hmm. So she's out, and mm -hmm. I will sell my obstructive roadblock. Ah, uh, okay. I see. Mm -hmm. I one see. One gold. Yeah. Play another history education. Oh, okay. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Come together. Come together. All right. So then uh, I will use Yumi's inspiration ability since I played herself and a campaign and a location. Score three points. Yeah. Not and bad. And since that uh, is a valid number, I will put her art into play. I'll use a history education draw. Cool. We'll pass. Okay. Uh, add a phase one. Produce a diligent farm or token. I put one gold into each, so I go up to six. That's correct. I draw my free card. I will pay the four gold to play Refuse Defeat. Yeah. The two gold alignment tax was paid for by the, uh, the diligent farmers over here, so not the worst. Not the worst. And I sell. I sell my restraining order for one more gold. Ah, okay. And I put Ufari the Beast Hunter. Interesting. There he is. Okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. And I end my turn. Okay, interesting. I've got a lot of options here. So I get my gold for turn, draw my card. Let me enter the tank. All right, so first things first, I'm going to have these three denizens attack into my slave cells, dealing a total of four damage. That'll cause the slave cells to leave. And because it left play, due to having zero health, I get to produce two runaway slave tokens. And... Notably, they are not hostile because I attacked, once again, a card that I control, but it does unlock Forceful Debt Collector's aggression, so I will gain one gold, going up to five. So, hmm. George. Okay. I would like to get a little bit political here. I could use my Black Mora Powder on Mufari, but if I don't, can I have his Mufari Kori token? I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, deal? deal? All right. So I will deal. not use this on Mufari. Okay. 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 All right. Good deal. Okay. So in that case, I will play Diligent Farmer and then activate his ability right away. And then I'll go ahead and play my champion, Kazin, Freedom Fighter. Kazin has Swift, so I can attack right away. And I see that Nick has a full hand of seven, potential to draw more. So usually if there's a lot of card draw, and the person already has a lot of cards in hand, the best axis of attack is to get rid of their gold generation. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Kazin attack into the artwork token, and this will turn him hostile because I'm attacking a card Brute. I don't control, uh, but it will remove the artwork. Kazin has no time for art. He wants to free slaves. And how exactly does that help him free slave? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, in this game, the lore is only as, uh, or it, it's limited only by your creativity, so. I'll say that maybe a piece of artwork was blocking the slave cell, which he's about to free, because I'm going to go ahead and activate his aggression ability to score one, two, three, four points, because that's how many attacks I made this turn. And because I scored three or more points this way, I get to produce another runaway slave. Mm -hmm. With that, I will go ahead and end my turn. I think that was pretty productive. All right, the gold phase counters, ahoy! What is to be done about this debacle over here? <laughs> It got kind of out of hand. I guess we'll start by playing Outmaneuver. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that happen on your Forceful Debt Collector. Uh-huh. Wow. Back to your hand. Back he goes. And we'll take a free draw for the turn. We'll play a Quiet Path. Right, Look at the top card, card of my deck. I don't want that one. Put on the bottom. 
Uh, I will use history education, the well, one of them, to draw another card. Cool. It's done for. And I suppose we can uh, we can follow that up with a, a craftsman's apprentice. Nice. The third uh, card type for inspiration, or the third card played for inspiration. Mm-hmm. I'll gain three points and make another art token. Uh, I'll then use or the second history education. See that? I see that. Cool. I think. Uh, no, it's it's sort of important. So we'll play a uh, crowded auditorium and uh, abandon it. Interesting. To draw one card. Yeah, I feel good with that. All right, and then I think we'll also try to keep things under control by having Yumi get a little aggressive. She didn't like uh, people sort of making comments about uh, her art. trash out of her her hardworking you know art token. So she's going to come after the farmer. A true artist, a suffering Whoa. artiste. Yes. Whoa. And so they'll they'll have a little bit of a fuff, kerfuffle, but I think she Yumi will be back, and we'll pass. Okay, at five gold, turn on my phase counters to two. So I'm going to choose my intelligent farmers, give them both gold, get four gold back. Now I am at seven. And I also have another diligent farmer coming towards me because I'm in phase two. Correct. Who I will also give a gold and then get two back. And now I am at eight. Let's use free draw now. Okay, then I will put this quarry in your camp, Alvin. Making your, good on your heel, huh? Yep. All right, Mufari's quarry. I choose my diligent farmer. Does not die on zero HP. Cool. So he has to refuse the feed effect on him now. Fusels of feats. And I also now play for four, hmm, four gold. Remove distractions. All the alignment tax, but somehow you've got the gold for it. <laughs> green's green's carrying a lot of weight over there. Yes. And I am also putting the oh, Death Strike striker. into the mix. Pretty good. And I think that's everything I would like to do for this turn. All right. Get my goal for turn. I'll go ahead and take my free draw. All right. Well, since you made good on your promise, uh, I'm not going to be using Blackmore Powder on this. And honestly, I don't really want to use it on anything else. I think I'm just going to go ahead and sell it and go back up one gold. Uh, and then mm. I'm going to go ahead and play for six gold, Bandit Raiders. Whoa. Yikes. Yeah. All right. So the Bandits are going to go ahead and attack into... I'm going to go like this, Bandit into this farmer here. So okay. that turns him hostile. And... Damages him for one. Uh, I will go ahead and use this ability to gain two. Draw a card. Then with that two gold, I will go ahead and play and use Mark Map. And the location I'm searching for, if you've ever played this Kazen deck before, you know exactly what I'm searching for. Uh, a little card called Slave Cells, which I'll go ahead oh and play right now. Then I'll have one, two, three. All these guys can attack, actually. So I'll have... Of these individuals attacking to slave cells, so that will deal one, two, three, four, five, six damage, removing it and allowing me to produce two more runaway slaves. Just honestly, just jam packing slave cells. Wow, you have force. This is an army. All right, and then I have this last guy that can attack. Uh, I'll have him attack into your farmer, so that will turn him hostile, and he will not take any damage because he's tenacious. This one's got an effect on it that will prevent anything from happening to it. Uh, all right, and then Mufari's quarry himself is going to attack into this artwork token to prevent you from copying it. <laughs> there it goes. All right, and that turns Mufari's quarry hostile. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and activate Kazin's aggression, scoring myself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points, and producing myself another runaway slave. All right, and with that, I'll pass it over to you, Nick. Well, gain my gold, put a phase counter on history education. I guess we'll just have uh, start with Craftman's Apprentice attack a runaway slave, this guy. Mm -hmm. All right, so George, now would be a good time to team up with Nick. If you start giving him Mufari's quarry tokens, he can start attacking into my stuff. And both of you guys should focus on what I'm doing over here. You're too far ahead with all those slaves, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a lot. That's like that's a lot. It's a lot to hit. So I'm okay, going to have room to in my hand. I'll play with the uh, I'll play with these locations. I'm going to give you my Oh, I only want location. I'll play that location so I can take a free draw for the turn. I'll play... That was really cool. Preventative really measures. Nice. Okay, so okay. I will look at your decks and then remove one card from it. 
Start with George. What's in here? What's in here? What's your strat? You can remove up to one card, which means you True. can gain favor by not removing anything. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. You if you can tell me, if you can tell me, if there's a card in your deck that you don't want to draw, uh, I'll move, remove that. Ooh. So basically, not removal. Like, you think would just be like not not helpful right now, or let like it's like it's hard because okay, I so... don't even have. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. Okay. Let let's. Here are some outs that you guys have. Okay. So. When you attach this to this, you'll be able to one-shot Mufari's quarry, and then the Diligent Farmer can take out this without losing anything. So that'll leave me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's eight, betrayal! Which means, which means Nick, like for every one thing that Nick removes, it takes me further away from winning next turn. True. Yeah. Okay. Basically, I'm going to take anything out of your deck that's not removal. So we'll take a just a green location, because you're not hurting for that. Right. Yeah. And yeah, we'll discard this. All right, and, and then when you see my deck, you, it'll be pretty obvious which is the which is the card you need to remove because it'll be yes. it'll be the thing that well, can yeah. get me out of what you guys are about to do to me. So I will try to make sure you don't draw into that. All right, so this is done, and I will draw a card when it's finished. Or you know, all right, and I will go ahead and shuffle. resolve it. All right, that's a good card. Uh, that cost me one, and then I guess this one's stronger. So we'll play a, a cunning strategist. Very nice. And <laughs> use history education to draw one card. I will use Dismissal on yet another slave. Yep. Get him out of here. I think that's smart because if uh, George draws into his other restraining order, he can easily get rid of this. Smart. Smart move. Yeah. You guys are playing to your outs. Right. All right, so... Do the best we can. Yeah. Um, pass. All right, take it away, George. Let's do what we can. Okay, okay, okay. Let us, first of all, get to the next phase of, Rufus def of Refuse to Defeat. Diligent Farmer. All right, so I would suggest... Uh, you use this before your free draw so that you can get as many draws as possible without spending any gold. You see but what I mean, George? Because like if you use your free draw first and then this, okay. Yeah, for sure. And I want to do the same thing of my uh, my di other diligent farmer. Yeah, I got you. Die. Now I can draw two cards, then discard a card. Yep. Move that card, and I can do my free draw. Good. Familiar road. Start. Lo Wait, what? You put Disheartened into your inactive zone? What's going on? Yeah. What's wrong with me discarding? It's a removal card. Oh, that's right. I don't think of negative one. I don't think of negatives as a as a. Well, I mean, maybe you have something else that's not. That's okay. Not I mean, that. yeah. I've. Uh, how is. about I use my obnoxious game caller and I uh, inspiration. Uh, his inspiration and that... is not unlocked yet, right? Oh. Okay. Yeah, you have to play some more cards. You have to play just one more card. Let, let's. All right. So now oh, you're down to seven. Great. Now, actually, I'm down to five. Yep. All right, so your inspiration's unlocked. And I choose... Yep. So... Oh, and I guess I should make... Oh, and I use... So I use a gold to give Nick a Mufari's quarry. Hey, time nice. for me. Nice. Okay. And then I spend Mufari's another quarry. gold to equip Mufari, the Death Striker. And now I choose Mufari to attack Mufari's quarry on Alvin's. Very nice. Side. And that removes him in one shot, scoring you five points. On the board. I'm back. Probably a very powerful hunter right there. <laughs> Crazy. Anything on the board is his. And then you still have one more attack here. Settler then. All right. So this and... guy becomes hostile and he loses one health in the process. But totally worth it. Oh, this guy is also hostile because he attacked. If you have a restraining order or anything else to mess with me, you could potentially remove this, this guy. But I would say job well done. Crisis averted, fellows. Uh, if I abandon... No, wow, crazy. And I also play. Ah, very nice. And his inspiration is in fact unlocked, so you can go ahead and fetch. Where is it? Where is it? Well, this is still a good. This is still good. Shuffle. Pass. Uh, all right. So go ahead and get my gold for turn. Uh, I will not use my free draw because I want to get maximum value of what I'm about to do next. So I will play my second obstructive roadblock. Uh, I will select this location with my obstructive roadblock, oh. and then I'm going to go ahead and play Joyous Celebration. So Ooh. that will draw me one, two, three, four, five, six. I have three in my hand already, so that will essentially draw me uh, back up to seven, and then um, I will repeatedly draw the top card of my deck and keep putting it back. But notably, it does let me look at it, so I do get to see what's next. All right, so I'll actually just sell this right now to get one more gold. So that was a short-lived roadblock. I'm still thinking I want to lock that down. So now I'm going to spend one gold to play Restraining Order. And then now I will have this guy attack into Cunning Strategist, dealing two damage to itself and five damage to the Strategist. 
I'll now go ahead and use its aggression, which is now unlocked, to gain two and draw a card. And then this is the card that I saw. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. And now I would use my free draw to draw a card. All right. Is this is this your last turn? Is this your PS Diddy's Jones? Not quite. Okay, so George, he can score five points off that. I could run all my dudes into that to prevent him from scoring five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it would be exactly enough to get rid of that and locking you out of, I mean, preventing you from scoring five, but I think that's probably not as important. This is going to attack into your crafts, yeah, your craftsman, dealing two damage to himself and removing your craftsman. Both of these guys are refusing defeat, so that's a little tricky, but I'll have this guy attack into your obnoxious name caller. All right, that leaves three more dudes. Um, yeah, the thing is, right now, my point scoring will be three, bringing me up to 15. And then if I keep these guys around and I don't get blown out by hostile... Okay, so I think I know what I'm going to do. So I'll have this one guy, if my math is correct, attack into... Craftsman's Apprentice, Nick, to finish it mm -hmm. off. And now I'll activate his aggression, scoring myself one, two, three, four points, go up to 16. And I'm not gonna attack with these guys. It doesn't give me as many points, but it makes it harder for you guys to get rid of um, these because they're not hostile. Um, and then I'm gonna use my last two gold to put a search counter on these two locations. And then I'm gonna immediately abandon this one to draw a card. And then that's the last of my gold. And yeah, we'll pass that way. All right, let's kick up the gold and my campaign. I think we got to... Uh... What are you oh, thinking? I mean, I can only remove two of his things, so we'll have to do it this way. We'll play Senior Tactician, five, and uh, Outmaneuver for one more gold. Nice. And we'll have your... Just get another slave. Let's make it a non-hostile one Yep. in your hand, a.k.a. get him out of here. Uh, and my Mufari Quarry, I'll make an attack in on the Bandit Raiders. Yep, and he will not take any damage because while he is attacking, all damage is prevented to it. Nice to have him around. Use the last, we'll use the draw for history education, put a card in my hand, and then it goes away. It's done. All right, so you very, we'll very cleverly not use your free draw, so you've left one spot open to. Yes, and we'll view the deck, and I will reveal to you a Scold, but I can't really play it. So yeah, uh, pass the turn. So we're on turn seven. So I'm in my second phase of remove distractions, which I would probably be better off drawing those two cards. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my free draw, and then I'm going to use my remove distractions to draw two extra cards as well, so that my hand is completely loaded. And I have to discard one of them. Get all the options before you discard. It's the way to play. There goes one. All right. Now I am going to choose to abandon my fish market to draw another card cool cool back up to nine because of these two very efficient farmers i play ava mm -hmm. i go down to six i play obstructive roadblock and i use it on you got hidden two, crag yeah, two juicy targets there roads are in such bad shape in me and here today <laughs> roadblocks everywhere <laughs> Grand Fish Market, draw a card if you control two or more Dendians that are aligned to green. Which you certainly yeah. do. Going to play a stat, uh, uh, Statue of Beloved Queen as well. Cool. And I'd like to give that to Ava. Nice. And I'd like to use one gold to give Nick another quarry. And I kill one of his quarries. Oh. Which one? Hostile or not hostile? It's your choice. Uh, hostile. All right. He gone. Bam. Now I'm at 10. Yeah. Catching back up. I you still have to destroy things on his board. <laughs> right. I also uh, play wow. Craftsman's Apprentice. I'm going to use my Diligent Farmer to attack Kazen. All right. Down he goes. And I also put in my Craftsman's Apprentice. Another one. I, uh, another one. I think that's all I can do for this turn. All right. So you end your turn. Like the writing's on the wall. Points. So I get four more points, and I guess that's my turn. Couldn't get the card I really wanted. All right. Well, I need only <laughs> play Kazin. Uh, uh. Attack all of these guys into say um, this location here to deal five total damage. That turns them all hostile. Locked down and then destroyed. 
And now I need only activate his aggression ability, scoring myself four points because I made four attacks this turn and producing one last runaway slave before the game is over and I win the game. The slaves are free, GG. GG. So George, Man. you actually had the win. I did. You actually had the I, win. When I, asked you the, when, I, yes. when I asked you when I asked you about Ava, and then like right. I could have I could have won already. You could have won. Because I and, had all And it would be I think it would be a good exercise to to see if you can find the line, okay? So basically okay. before you ended the turn, you had two more actions that you could have made that would have won you this game. Did I not say my diligent farmer and both my diligent farmers attacked Tenzin, Kazen? Did I not say that? Was that not clear? So this one attacked into Kazen. That's that's fine. But you had two more attacks you could have made. And if both of these oh. had attacked into my runaway slaves, even though they wouldn't have got rid of them, they would still have lost health. And this one wouldn't have left play because it has the refuse defeat effect on it. And oh, this one that's already has right, two. It's because it would have reduced the damage and I would have won. That's right. You, you made a deck that is literally a counter to mine, but I was supposed to replay for the counter to win. I almost had you. That's I just right. Did, I forgot. Oh. This, this, game, oh. this game would have been yours oh. if you had saw that uh, line. This deck is so good. That means this deck is amazing. I had the win. When I when I pulled Ava, I'm like, oh man, Ava. But I don't have I don't my lifelong card. I don't have the card. Like, turn the points double. I yeah, need that but card. you didn't need it. You didn't need to double your points. You didn't need had. it. You had I, everything you I needed four, on board. I have four win methods. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ah. Yeah, so you're inching closer and closer to your first win on this show, George, because oh, last man. game you actually could you actually had a very high chance of winning last game with different uh, um, sequencing. Right? In this but game this you like, absolutely yeah. had it. It was it was definitively oh. your game with the right sequencing. So this was so good. This was so good. That was so fun. Yeah, it was a very Can't good game. I had a very explosive start at the beginning. I was able to uh, draw naturally into my first slave cells in my opening hand, and then I, I got the marked map to get the second slave cells, and that's a lot of value in the Kazen deck. That was so crazy. Like, yeah. you made a really good runaway red-green deck. Like, it's fantastic. That that was fantastic. Nick, I feel like you're there's something sleeping within your deck. I don't yeah, know I'll play it again, and, and hopefully it does what it's supposed to do, where any one item lives a turn, or... I find removal is valid in the first few turns, and mm -hmm. I don't just draw card draw. So I also, you know, didn't see the super explosive start coming. And there's been so few games we played before this where items were like a target for attack. So I was like, well, maybe they'll sneak by, but uh, not so against not so against the Kazen deck who just wants to attack everything everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I see my exactly. Statue. Kazen is more than happy to to attack into items if it means free more slaves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Guys, that'll do it for this episode of Champions of Meandir Gameplay. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, I certainly yeah. did. Had a lot of fun. Wonderful. GG's. All right. See you later, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.